in the Doppler effect, we're going to look at the observed change or the perceived change in pitch or frequency between the object and um, the source and the listener. Now we have the source, which is the one that emits the sound waves. And this is an observer. These are the observers. Let's say this is observer A and this is observer B. Now the source and the observer uh, which is the listener are not moving they both stationary so this simply means that the velocity of the listener a is equal to zero and the velocity of the listener b they are equal to zero as well as the source the velocity of the source is equal to zero so there's no movement there's no relative motion between the two now the f the, the source it emits the sound wave um, with the frequency, we, the FS is the frequency of the source, let's say it's 600 hertz, right? So by emitting the frequency of 600 hertz, what will be the frequency observed by the listeners there? So now we can simply say that the frequency observed by listener A is equivalent to the frequency of the source which is it's what 600 hertz say um, since they, they, they they're both not moving the relative there's no relative motion between the two the frequency observed by listener B is equivalent to the frequency of the source which is what 600 hertz right I hope that makes sense now this is the same situation if you are in the car as a listener and the car is moving so you and the car are moving with the same velocity so your frequency as a listener will be equal to the frequency of the source which is this car if it's 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 emitting sound so this is an ambulance and emit is emitting a sound through its siren so if you look at the wave fronts here the wave front which is the wavelength are equivalent in in front for b b between the so the or the listener a and the source the wavelength are equivalent even here in front of the car which is between the observer b and the and the car which is the source the wavelength are equal right um i hope that makes sense now i'm going to show you the simulation the simulation that shows this When an object, um, when a source is moving towards uh, the listener or the listener is moving towards the source, um, let's say this is a um, this is a source. Now the velocity of the source is not equal to zero. It means it's moving now, right? And then let's say the listener here, uh, his velocity is zero, right? So now, this source, the ambulance, it emits the sound wave with the frequency. Let's say the frequency now. Frequency of the source is 600. Now, guys, it's very important to understand this. The source is moving towards the listener and the listener is stationary. The source, the listener, the frequency of the listener is greater than the frequency of the source when they move towards each other all the time the frequency that will be perceived by the listener will be always greater than the frequency of the source which is probably it will be above 600 maybe 640 610 or any now guys always if it was the source that was stationary and the listener was moving towards the source it was going to be the same case the frequency of the listener was going to be greater than the frequency of the source now it's very important if you're looking at this diagram the wave fronts here um in front as the source moving towards the listener if you're looking here the wavelength here are getting smaller and smaller so as the object moves towards um, the, as the source moves towards the listener the wavelength is becoming what shorter and the frequency is what the frequency of the listener is increasing from the formula that says 
frequency is inversely proportional to what to um, to to wavelength as the wavelength decreases the frequency increases there it's very important right so guys um the formula when they move towards each other any of the two moving towards each other the formula that you use there is the same as the formula that i've shown you in the previous in the previous um explanation frequency of the listener is equal to v it's going to be plus plus v plus velocity of the listener divide by um v minus v of the source and multiply by the frequency of the source guys when it moves towards when there's towards each other the in the numerator here in the in the numerator here there will be plus and then in the denominator there will be a what a negative there all the time when it's towards you use this formula it's a plus on top and the negative below let's look at when the source is moving away from the listener or an observer now what is happening here um it's the same um the frequency the frequency of the source um it's going to be let's say it's 600 again 600 hertz and the frequency of the listener since it's moving away the perceived or the observed frequency by the listener will be lesser than the frequency of the source all the time when there is a moving away from each other so the frequency that will be perceived by the listener it will be less than 600 which is maybe it will be 500 and something or anything that is lesser than that that's always the case but I look at the wavelength or the wave fronts there do you see there the wavelength as the car it's moving away the wavelength is what is increasing the wavelength is increasing from that so the increase in wavelength that means the frequency of the listener will what will decrease there because of that inverse proportionality between the two all the time guys when there's a moving away from each other whether it's a source or it's a listener there is a the velocity the frequency of the listener it will be it will be less than the frequency of the source right um while the velocity of the listener is equal to zero and the frequency velocity of the source is not equal to zero and constant velocity right now when it when it comes to a calculation so using the formula that says frequency of the listener is equal to v um minus on top when they move away from each other in the in the numerator there must be a negative at the denominator and the positive so it will be like this vl divided by v plus v source multiplied by the frequency of the source all the time guys the doppler effect equation we have this equation it's a standard equation you will be given in the formula sheet it says frequency of the listener is equal to the velocity of the sound this is the velocity of the sound depending on what type of medium <coughs> sorry depending on what type of medium if the medium is air it will be the same if it's liquid it will be the same if it's solid it will be the same there this is a plus minus plus minus i'll tell you later this is the velocity of the listener you put the velocity of the listener which is the observer and this is the velocity of the source which is the one that emits the sound wave all this we multiply by the frequency of the source the frequency guys here is measured in what in hertz the frequency is measured in hertz and then our velocities it must be meters per second all of them even the velocity of the sound if the source now now, um, is moving away but now the speed of the source is not constant is not equal to zero right and it's not constant now let's say the source now is slowing down slowing down but it's moving away so if it's moving away it's not moving at constant velocity the frequency that is observed by the listener will be greater than the frequency of the source 
while it's moving away it's very important guys it's very important but if it was moving away okay this is a scenario of when it's moving away uh, while it's slowing down now let's say if a situation it's moving away with a velocity of the source that is not equal to zero and it's not constant the velocity is not constant but it's speeding up which is speeding up is moving faster or it's accelerating the frequency of the listener will be less in this case than the frequency of the source right it's very important guys it's very important okay now let's look at the graphs graphs now our graph here it will be a graph like this the graph of the it will be the frequency the, this will be the frequency in hertz right in hertz and this will be time let's say in seconds guys here let's say the object was moving towards the the listener this is the listener and this is an object and then it was moving towards right and then the car pass which is the source past the listener right this is the listener and this is the source right so what's happening as it moves towards uh, towards yeah we know the frequency of the listener is greater than the frequency of the source and then if the source passed the 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 listener now it's moving away here right while it's moving away we know that at constant speed this is happening at constant speed guys so we know the frequency of the listener is what is lesser than the frequency of the source now at this case while it passes here it passes the frequency of the listener and the frequency of the source are equivalent there okay um that's that is where there's a transition there there's a transition between the two so how do we show this graphically so this will be the frequency of the and um, this is the frequency of the listener while it's moving towards right and then there's that transition where it passes the frequency decreases so the frequency of the listener was high and then now it becomes what less so now there's that transition of the decrease in frequency there in that time so the frequency now will show it as less there so always this graph this is the frequency of the listener while it's moving away right so this is the transition right guys all the time if you have the line above and the line below the line above is the frequency is the high frequency and this is the low frequency so the high frequency is when it was moving towards and the low frequency it was when it was moving away